best, uh, what's that guy, Michael Buffer voice? Is that you like? He was for the boxing matches or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner we have, and I go, I guess you guys recognize the voice, it's Peter Palma. Palma. <laughs> yeah, that's good, at least, yeah, that's don't, right. Don't they always say it twice? Maybe, I don't know, I don't watch sports. You don't watch sports? Like, what's ever. I don't know. You just don't have time. If I wanted to see like a bunch of millionaires like in tights chase a ball around, oh, this is like not interesting to me in in any way, shape, or form. In tights, yeah, it's like, <laughs> or with their shirts off, with their chest glistening with sweat for the yeah, boxing. D- yeah, well, yeah, they do that too. And boxing's boring. You know, boxing, it's, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. Some of it is, most of it is. Yeah, but you know what's no. really also boring too is UFC. I mean, that's for, most of the time. Like in the if the in the first thirty seconds of like ninety five percent of the fights, nothing happens. Yeah. So there's like that's like a huge majority of the time that's gone. And then like a lot of time they're just like in a clinch, like on the ground or something. It's kind of have you like noticed though that when gay porn when UFC first came out that it wasn't like that that they would just then they just come out brawling and yeah, then well, as it, as it's graduated and gotten more popular and. I guess more money on the line and people want to preserve their health. So they get more technical with it now. Yeah. And the, you know, then people like at first it was just like people beating the crap out of each other. And then a dude was like, I know how to fight like technically. And then it would like just put a dude in an arm bar and then win. And then, so now it's like evolved, but, and there was competition. They had pride back in the day, pride fighting. And yeah, exactly. these people don't want to hear this. Yeah, they do. They yeah. love it. I okay. sponsor an MMA fighter, Jared Markle. Okay. We, we talk about, uh, MMA fighting all the time. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. All all subjects are of interest to lead heads. Nothing's off limits here. Anything nothing. and everything goes. Nothing. <laughs> all right, guys. So let me uh, go ahead and thank our guest from last week, Casey Knutson with Nordic Components. We greatly appreciate uh, Nordic Components coming on as a sponsor of Talking Lead and also sponsoring our three gunner, Casey Griggs. So you guys make sure you show Nordic Components some love, and they're showing Leadhead some love by offering you a discount code. Use the Leadhead discount code. Get 7% discount on, uh, I believe it's everything on their, their website. So being the holidays, Christmas shopping coming up, perfect time to do that. While I mention it, you can also use that Leadhead discount code at Tactical Walls, Dipstick Coatings, and Primix Systems. So go to those websites support those guys because they support the show and without them there wouldn't be a show then it would just be dead dead air when they logged on no but seriously guys go show them some love um use those discount codes show them that the leadhead nation is behind them and that you appreciate them making this show possible so let's get to our guest peter palma peter it's been a while since you've been on buddy yeah i've been uh busy with a lot of stuff i uh was in college, so I had to graduate that. But then right before that, I was running my Kickstarter for the double miss clean. And so I had to, like, spend all that time promoting all of that. And then I was in danger of, like, failing my classes. So I had to, like, as soon as it (laughs) made its goal and I was able to uh, order the things on the critical path, I had to, like, pass college. And I did that, and I graduated on a Friday, and I started working on a Monday. uh, Just like that, huh? Just like that. That's what happens when you have an engineering degree. You know, and not a liberal arts degree. Or, <laughs> you actually get a job, right? <laughs> what's the one that everybody in the Marines always gets to be a cop, but you don't really even need it? Oh, the criminal just, justice. Criminal justice, yeah. Why would you even incur the debt and time to get that degree? That's like what I I started off. I got my degree in aerospace, and I started off pro pilot. And you know, it was like I don't even I don't even I need a degree, but it doesn't have to be you know, and it doesn't have to be an emphasis on pro pilot because you have to pay for all that flying and everything extra anyway. You know, it's not part of your tuition. So once I figured that out, I was like, screw this. So I switched to uh, administration, and I got my degree in administration, and I did all the flying crap on the side and uh, did it did it when I you know could afford it. But, yeah, I know what you mean. But congratulations, man, on getting graduated. Yeah. It's nice to have, like, a income that doesn't rely on the farms industry, so that way you can just say whatever you want and nobody – they can like black. You can make what you want. You can do yeah. what you want. Yep. Yeah. I so hate, the, but then again, you have to be like, it's, it's like, if 
you know, I, uh, my boss comes to me and tells me to do the dumbest thing ever. I have to do it. And like, and that's like, goes against my whole body. But every day there's every week, there's a check that gets a, a big check that gets deposited in my bank account. And I have health insurance. And like, I, I know that, you know, everything is going to be, I don't have to worry about anything. Like if the chemical plant yeah. I'm working for blows up, as long as it doesn't hurt me, I don't care. Like that's not my chemical plant. I was going to yeah. ask, can you, can you tell everybody what you're doing now? Well, I was working at a plant that made, uh, ammonium nitrate which is kind of cool which is pretty much boom yeah it's like it's it's, it's a fertilizer plant it's, uh, but uh i'm going now to an uh a refinery for fuel for gasoline and benzene even and things more like that. explosive mm-hmm. <laughs> where yeah, is well, this leading to peter what where, where, where do you what are you ultimately wanting to, to do here um it sounds explosive to me yeah it's pretty much th- yeah it's very volatile chemicals and it's kind of scary when they're like you know, telling you about it and you have to get fitted for a gas mask and all that stuff. But I mean, they occasionally blow up or whatever, but I mean, <laughs> it's any job you could be working at, like as a bank teller, that's kind of dangerous, but you know, nobody worries that's about that. True. You know, it's like, it's your time. It's your time. So, I mean, working at a fireworks plant, yeah. those, those tend to blow up a lot. Yeah. At least if I get like blown up in a plant, my family is going to be rich. Cause I'm going to sue the crap out of them and they have, <laughs> I have the money. They'll just settle. They're like, yeah, let's just settle for like 5 million. That's fine. Like they, they don't even take like, five. Yeah. They don't even, they wouldn't even blink an eye. So at least there's that too. You know, I have I never know what I'm going to end up doing. But then so. you've got, you've got the MS clean company also in your back pocket, so to speak. Yeah. I'm, we're just about getting out of the, we're, we're totally in the black as far as like an accounting purposes go, but like on a, cash flow goes we're kind of in the red so we just gotta wait for our you know every time you i i, I come in realizing what every time you introduce a new product you know there's like a cost associated with that and maybe this is something a lot of people don't understand or like why does not magpul come out with this thing or why don't these people do in this color or why don't they do it like this one it's because like say you have like widget a rifle a right and you come out with it you buy it and then like say it's 10 bucks for this rifle i know it's not 10 bucks but let's just pretend because we're pretending like doing this, complex math. We're, we're playing it costs you ten dollars for it and you can sell for 20 bucks so you double your profit well you buy a thousand so you're in debt for a thousand units and then you sell the units so you now you have enough money to buy two thousand units but you have to pay off your debt from the other unit and now you only have enough money to buy another thousand units and and you, which you have to because now all your units are sold. So now you're right. back at zero. So you like you had all these sales. You're like, oh, you're, you're selling. It's great. But it's like in order to get like a p- positive cash flow, you need to be doing it for a little bit of time. Unless you like close down your doors or I'm like, all right, I made it. I, I made my thousand units and I sold them for two thousand and I paid my thousand off of debt and I paid my other thousand. I'm done. I'm no, done. you have to. Yeah. yeah, and you quit. And you just throw your, <laughs> But, but then the you've got all these people that are still wanting your product, you know, so, you know. Yeah, you, and then you, so you have to put that money back in and now you have them more money. And it just takes time for that to catch up. But eventually, and every product you come out with in every color and every different lubricant and every, yeah. you know, everything, every time you do that, you're doing that whole process over again. Right. And you, you just recently experienced all that with your original MS Clean Kit going to your double Miss Clean Kit. I call it MS. It's Miss Clean. I'm yeah. Sorry. And every color too. So like if, if say I want to have two, like a thousand of a product on, on in case somebody wants that many, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if I want to have a thousand on and I only have black, that's fine. Cause I only have to carry 2000 to a thousand singles, a thousand doubles. But if they want to in flat dark earth and they want in coyote and then, so that's like, now I have to put all that money in now. And now instead of just keeping a thousand on hand of each one, now I have to, you know, there's five different ones. And so now I need like 7,000 right. units. on. Now you're building system. inventory and your sitting risk there. of, of sitting there goes up and, but you've got a good product and people are buying it and selling it. So you don't have to worry about it sitting on the shelves. Yeah, no, it's no, it's going pretty quickly. And, uh, so ever since you guys got you got that Kickstarter going, uh, you know there was there's been a high demand for them. So how's that going with the Kickstarter? You know, fulfilling all those and and whatnot. I know that you ran into some some stumbling blocks, but uh, I think you got everything on track now, right? Yeah, pretty much. Like we had the partnership with a bunch of different companies, you know, to get because we like them and every everybody's helping everybody. And you know, especially when you're a small companies like that, you want to find others like-minded small companies and, and 
to get with them. The only thing is, is that now you're relying on like, instead of just yourself and my, my suppliers, now I have like 20 different suppliers or something. And if right. one of them is late, then it prevents me from shipping my stuff out. And that's what happened. There's two or three yeah. of the people that were really drug their feet on it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, Hey, I need this. Cause not only you, fulfill you, know, orders. you made promises, yeah. you got you to gotta keep it. Yeah, exactly. People want the product and some people are understanding. They're like, okay, you know, we get it. It's a, it's a first time product yeah. and there's going to be, let's, let's back up just a second. So for those who don't know what the Miss clean kit is, what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a magazine shaped, an AR magazine shaped, um, device that it hollow on the inside. It's got a top they that call slides those containers. over. The container. I was trying to come up with a cool uh, $10 word for it, but <laughs> container does it, I guess. <laughs> and you can store shit in there, basically. Uh, it was designed to store your uh, field cleaning kit in there. So, you know, you'd have your rod, you'd have your solution, you'd have your, your cleaning pads and whatnot, all stored in this AR-shaped magazine. And, oh, by the way, uh, it's conducive to the pouches that you already have, so you don't have to have some sort of special carrying device for it or anything it'll just slip right in your uh, magazine pouch and you've got it right there with you at the at the ready so that's the miss clean kit and you guys can go to their facebook page or their website and uh, you guys google there's video yeah google it there's videos on it but they've come up with a double miss clean kit as well there's people coming up with all kinds of of ideas for uses for it i just watched a video on your facebook page of this guy that was torture testing it, so to speak. I don't know who the guy was, but he ran over it with a golf cart, and he was kind of just having fun with it. And uh, had some Tannerite, and he had the Miss Clean kit on top of the Tannerite, and he shot the Tannerite, and it didn't explode. And he's like, oh, proof that the Miss Clean kit neutralizes Tannerite. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is – And then he had that, that fifty caliber. He shot it with a fifty caliber. <laughs> In slow motion. And, uh, yeah, he was like it, it deflected fifty caliber, and then you could see the strings, the fish wire of the of the fifty caliber bullet going at it. <laughs> that guy is who is, is that guy? His name is Royal Nunsuch, and he's like nineteen or twenty or something like that. And he is like probably the most entertaining and like genuine guy on YouTube, like bar none. Like you know, you have like FPS Rush who's like. I have a fake Russian accent. Here I am shooting this. It's like the same thing over and over again. And it's whatever, I guess, if you like that type of thing. But this guy pretty much makes his own guns out of just like plumbing pipe and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. <laughs> like he'll go to the store and like makes 12 gauge and it's like a oh, super janky. And he's like shooting it like, like with his hands. And he made, it's just like, if you haven't seen what he does, you have to see, and he's super young. And he's like, he's like really excitable and uh, he fears nothing. Like I would never want to do any of this stuff. I would like maim myself. Yeah. Uh, well, he had a, a, a sweater on that was very reminiscent of someone that made me think of Carnicon uh, with this ugly ass sweater that he was wearing during the video. So yeah, they're in the, I didn't know. They're in the same state or they were rather. I got you. So he gets, he gets, uh, the hand-me-down sweaters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? Well, the, yeah, he draws, you know, he draws inspiration from uh, Dugan, you know, and uh, I think he's he's pretty clever, this Royal Nonsuch kid. I think there's just a, the one video which was, like, my favorite because there's so many people like, oh, your finger's on the trigger and blah, 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 and your safety's not on. You broke the 180 and all this stuff. And I get it because there's a lot of stupid people out there, so you want to prevent people from shooting themselves. But sometimes it's like, all right, like, right. me and my friends are professionals, and, you know, I've – there's no 180 in Iraq or Afghanistan. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. you just don't shoot your friends. You know what I mean? And so right. it's, it's kind be, of unwritten law, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make a video like at my private range and it's just me and the video guy. And they'll be like, you broke the 180. I'm like, I don't shoot use PSA, you little b Sorry. Yeah. No, but, that's okay. So yeah. Royal Nonsense has this video where he tries to like, he's got like a aerosol can and he puts, he tapes like a road flare to it. So that like when he shoots arrows on it, it'll blow up. He's like, well, I'm having like he couldn't see with his glasses on because he's shooting with like a pellet gun in essence. Right. And so he like throws it up in the air in a cornfield that's like super dry, he's the driest cornfield you could find wherever <laughs> he's at. And he's like, oh, I can't. Really he's like, I'm gonna have trouble seeing it. So he takes his eye pro off when you're doing the shadiest thing ever. And he like throws up. It's like, and I'm like, man, this guy is nuts. And he's like making grappling hook 
shooters and he's he just like all the stuff. He so makes is he like he really doing this stuff or is he just like spoofing it? No, he's like, really doing it. Like, like Carnicon does. No, he's really doing it. He like goes out there and it's like go and if he, he's got like a welding machine and if I, you just said go into Home Depot and come out with a shotgun and that's what he does like pretty much. It's hilarious. And he's just MacGyver. He MacGyver stuff. Yeah, and it's like when we you know when we were kids. You know, you would take your, t- you couldn't just take your 1022 and leave it the way it was, leave it well enough. You're always got to mess with it. And I guess that's kind of starts where, you know, in your own thing. So like, you, okay, you, you will paint it like me and my buddy Murph who, who uh, does the grip stop. Like mm-hmm. we're just always messing with our gun. Like a gun never really stays stock. It's like a race uh-uh. car driver. Nobody's yeah. going to get, nobody who's really into cars buys a car and says, oh, this is great the way it is. Like you're yeah. going to mess with it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And and you br- we and just it, had this conversation. I think it was last episode we were talking about uh, that in particular. Is I can't I can't buy it. It can't stay the way it is when I when I buy it. It can't stay stock. It's got to something's got to change on it. Yeah, that's yeah. why I don't see like why people buy like like a Kimber or something like that. You know I mean like you can like get, make a get a crappy nineteen eleven and like make it the way you want or get like a a quasi like custom AR. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I want my AR like the way I want it. Or you just know, build your own. Yeah, I mean, there's, exactly. you can build your own, but there's people who do are that actually, nowadays. Well, that's what everybody's doing. Do you think like all five thousand AR manufacturers out there right now? Do you think they like crank up their machines and like put them? No, they're no. buying the they buy from pieces from manufacturers like Nordic Components. You know, the top five gun manufacturers buy uh, a lot of their components, their AR parts from Nordic Components. You know, it's not anything they're milling or making themselves. There's a dog. That's my buddy. It's Oshi. He's a good boy. He's a good buddy. He's the mascot. I have like a somewhat strange addiction with kissing dogs and cats' noses, especially (laughs) when they're like asleep. Like I love that. Yeah, like because it's all dry, you know? Like when they're awake, it's all wet and cold. When they're sleeping, it's all dry and it's warm. It's like that feeling, you know? It's like if you ever watch Strange Addiction and you watch people eat couch cushions and they can't stop or they're drinking nail polish or snorting <laughs> or whatever it is. Like when I see – like I, if the dog's like vicious, like I want to go kiss his nose. When I see a lion, that's what I think of. I want to like go up. You want to go kiss his nose? I want to kiss his nose. But I also want him to be tranquilized when I do it because I don't want to – Dude, that could be a whole new video series right there. Me tranquilizing things and kissing their noses? Or no, just like walking up on them in the wild and then going up and kissing yeah. their nose and seeing if you can get away. I don't think it works like that. I don't think they would let you get that close. And if you were that close, you but that's the whole. It's like jackass, man. You're gonna go. You're gonna do crazy wild stuff, and you're gonna get billions and billions of views because of that. You yeah, might get yeah, my one video where I get eaten by a lion. You get eaten, get mauled by billions, the lion, yeah. or the baboon. Oh like, my you know, goodness! You, you're showing me your new uh, art acquisitions back there. That, that baboon's awesome. I love that. He's cool. Yeah. All right, so let's um, we'll get back to Peter and and get caught up with him. Let's get into our Jack Wagon of the Week. Bring it in, Gunny. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. All right, so Peter has brought us a very good Jack Wagon this week. And in traditional Peter Palma style, we're going to let him – introduce our new inductee who you got peter well it's really not of this week necessarily it's more of like in my lifetime and you know i just think that this jack wagon doesn't get the hate that should be directed at him and it's directed other places and i'm going to take a lot of flack from it i think probably one of the worst presidents since i've been alive was ronald reagan Especially what? when it comes when it comes to especially when it comes to gun stuff. Absolutely. Ronnie Ronnie Reagan? You're throwing Ronnie Reagan on the Jack Wagon train? Yes. Okay. All right. Explain right. your answer. All right. Like there's what two, he invoked. Yes. Pretty much the thing that like really why you can't have a machine gun unless you have like tens of thousands of dollars or maybe at least like, or a really crappy machine gun for like 5,000 is because of Ronald Reagan. And because of the, like, well, I don't want to say because him, it happened during his reign at least, you know, and that was part of the, all that stuff that they were doing then. And they had a huge like anti-gun push, like in the eighties. If you think of like all of like the, 
the heroes, like even you know the the A team never like shot anybody. They were shooting guns everywhere. They were sh- never shooting anybody. All of those things were like that. So like pretty much from 1986, you can't manufacture new machine guns to transfer to people like how we make suppressors right now. You know what I mean? And that's probably one of the worst pieces of legislation that's in existence because that's like in essence you're it, it, it's just a, it's turning up the pot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that was a huge click up. It went from like four to like six and nobody ever brings that up. Everybody else would just fillet. They would suck Reagan's rotting b- right now. All right. <laughs> and they're, but everybody hates Obama. And as far as I know, the vast majority of legislations like that were local or state or that have been passed in his reign have been pro gun. Like I know there's like more and more, and they're even talking about like taking silencers off the NFA. That would yeah. ne- and and so like everybody's like, it's push just like for that. It's just like they're blind followers. It's like think for yourself. Like Reagan's the best thing ever. <laughs> Obama's really bad. But it's just like they're just like regurgitating stuff that everybody else is saying, and they're not even really thinking for themselves. And I'm not saying Obama's like a the greatest president or whatever. Reagan <laughs> should be up in there too. And like if you really if you really hate as far as gun legislation, you hate Obama, then you should really hate Reagan. Then you cannot hate Obama for his quote unquote legislation and like Reagan. He was the right. worst. You know what I mean? For for the for for our two A uh rights. Yes. You know. And and that now you gotta give the guy props for introducing Star Wars. You know, the whole Star I, Wars program. Don't even get me started on that. Like Star Wars <laughs> I, it does not make – yeah, they have lasers, guns, but that's whatever. Like, I don't understand why lasers. it's so integrated on my Instagram. Like, oh, look, here's a girl in, like, a Bubba Fett hat. It's so hot. It's like, no, it's not like – like, Bubba Fett sucks, first of all. And, like, he didn't really he's do – the worst, He's the worst bounty hunter ever. Yeah, and then, like, <laughs> and, and then like Luke was the giantest pussy ever. He's, like, the worst hero oh. in anything ever. Like, I, even as a child, I hated him. So, like, I, and then now it's, like – for whatever reason, everywhere I look on Instagram, it's cool to have like your AR-15 with like a stormtrooper helmet on. I'm like, this is why. It's just like it's just like putting two things that they like do not go together together. It's like, look, I got I got the best Greek yogurt ever, and I put the Greek yogurt symbol on my AR-15. It's like, there, like there's no correlation. Wait a minute, I'm gonna break it. Nice grip stop. Ah, uh, thank you. That is a. Uh... Uh, Lanco Tactical. Oh, wow, that's the old one. So, like you're saying, uh, how about Mickey Mouse on your AR? Can you see yeah, that? Yeah, it's like the same thing. It's like <laughs> not related. I took something that I like and I put it on a gun, which is whatever, exactly. I guess. But why is it so prevalent? It's called personalization. You want to personalize. People want to personalize things. You know, I, they want to put their own stamp on it. I get it. I understand yeah. that. But you don't. But why is it so? Why is there so much freaking Star Wars? And they're, I can't even sit through them. Like I, I really don't think they're all that great. I mean, they're good, or whatever. But they're not like the greatest thing in the world. I think they're like super ultra overrated. Well, well now I got you know I grew up in the Star Wars era. You know that's kind of my era. So did I. And and uh, how are you? Thirty five. Thirty. I'm I'm forty four. So okay. I was you know I was there for the original Star Wars when it came out and. I mean, that was like the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, when you're a kid that age and you're seeing, you know, all this space and, you know, lightsabers and laser guns and, and uh, the freaking Millennium Falcon and this big freaking walking dog, you know, that, that can shoot guns with you. <laughs> I mean, it don't get no better than that. I mean, if my dog could shoot guns with me, oh, my gosh, how cool would that be? Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I mean, I just don't understand how it relates to why I have to look at it on an AR all the time, or why there's. I just don't. I'm, well, but, you need to you need to get a get a movement for things you like on ARs. W- yeah. What do you put on your ARs? Anything? My, mine would be no, not really. I just mine's mostly functional, but like mm-hmm. I would like put like dead Nazis on it or something like that. It's like that, and that's the next level of coolness. So you're putting that next level of coolness, that next level of personalization. When you've gone in and you've modified it and put all the f- on it that you can, what's the next thing to do? You hydro dip it, you seracote it. I understand that's kind of the thing, I see, kind of the thing I've gotten into now is is the hydro dipping. I've I've become it like I got addicted to building guns. You know, I'm, I'm like on my fifth six AR right now, and I got a hydro dip now. I got to do. I did a I did a Mossberg 500 in giraffe. Just because I like the giraffe freaking pattern and it looked cool on it. 
I I agree. I think it's neat to do all kinds of cool stuff. Like I saw they somebody did like a Tabasco themed shotgun or whatever. I get it. What I don't understand is why, like, like one or two person did a Tabasco thing, but there's not like five thousand. It doesn't like fill up my Instagram feed of like mm-hmm. a Tabasco colored guns. Like, like why a cult. Is, yeah, there's so many other cool gun movies and gun type things than than Star Wars. Come on. <laughs> I got you. So you've had your fill of Star Wars, and you know that's probably got to do a lot with the new movies that are getting getting. No, it's released. it's been like that for like f- four or five years now. Star Wars. Well, Battle they've, Wars. They've, they've been, they've been waiting for four or five years for this movie to come out. So they just in anticipation. They've got to do something to celebrate, and that's. Well, how come there's those better. like Star Trek ARs or anything like a Battlestar Galactica is way better. In Star Wars, why come there's no BSG guns? I don't know. Maybe you should do one. You should no. start the fad. Because it doesn't have a correlation. Oh, sure it does. Battlestar Galactica? What, with yeah. an AR-15? Tell me what the correlation is. They had is. guns. They had guns in, uh, in Battlestar Galactica, and especially yeah, yeah. that new That's... that new one. Um... Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have guns, but there's like, if I were to make a themed rifle for every movie that had guns in it, it would be like every movie ever made. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, I see they do Red, Red Dawn themed AKs because it's like relevant. Like they, you know, it makes sense. Oh, what, but what would they put on? I mean, because there's not like you know, you don't have these um, science fiction, you know, fictional characters in Red Dawn or anything. They're they're they just use real AKs in that. You know, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that's what. That's why. Yeah, that's it makes sense. You see what I'm saying? That's boring. They just buy one and then they don't have to do anything to it. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> anyway, Reagan's so Ronald Reagan, Reagan started all this. <laughs> yeah, he's a douche, and he started Star Wars, which is probably where that came from. Who knows? But I just think that, like, if you really want to be honest with yourself, you have to look at the gun legislation passed in Obama's reign and look at the gun legislation passed in Reagan's. Here's uh, some more on Reagan. It says, once retired from politics, Mr. Reagan, unlike Republican Party leaders these days, reconsidered the issues and eventually showed a willingness to embrace reasonable bipartisan proposals to protect the public from gun abusers. Two years after he left office, Mr. Reagan surprised the nation by endorsing the proposed Brady law that established federal background checks of firearms uh, of firearm buyers for criminal records and histories of mental disturbance. The former president noted that the law was inspired by the case of Jim Brady, his devoted press secretary, who was partially paralyzed by a gunshot wound to the head during um, that assassination attempt by, what was that, Hinckley? Hinckley Jr.? Yeah. This nightmare might never have happened if the Brady law had been in effect, Mr. Reagan emphasized. And, and as we know today, that that's not the case. You know, uh, a criminal is going to obtain a firearm illegally. They're not going to go through legal means to obtain a firearm. So all the laws that are in place, you know, all, all they do is affect law-abiding citizens. So this is the one right here. This is the part that I'm finding. So in November of 1st, okay. in 1981, this is where it really started. So like any parts that were used to make an, uh, uh, something fall, like a drop-in auto-sear or sears or anything mm-hmm. like that, it, there, was a, there was a loophole there where you could make new ones. So you could make – like in essence, you could have put a, make a drop in here before 1981 and other parts to make like the fire control parts and things like that of an AR. And so pretty much in, in 1981, like less than a month after he gets in, he allows th- this to go through or this goes through under his reign. So that's really where you in 1981 is where you really st- that you you they really start cutting down the transferable machine gun stuff. And then right. it goes on to the that one in 1986, which is like. Read it. Do you have it? Yeah. For civilian possession, all machine guns must have been manufactured with a register with ATF prior to May 19th. So, like, it, 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 that's kind of like, I don't know, you could have made it and sold it before that, right? But then after that, then you, you it could only go between um, SOTs, type right. 7 SOTs. You know what I mean? And that happened during this thing. And so, yeah. That I know happened that's what on it was. So, yeah. And so, like in nine, in eighty, that's what it was. In eighty-one, right after he got in, they kind of closed the. There was like a little bit of a loophole where you could get like auto sears and stuff and fire control things. And then, like, they're like, no, like this is it. So that's why, like, a receiver that costs a hundred dollars, you drill a hole in it. If it was it had a hole drilled in it before nineteen eighty-six, it's worth like ten thousand now. 
you know, oh, you can't yeah. make new ones. Yeah, I mean, if you could go through all that work to get a suppressor, you should be able to deal with the machine gun too. Yeah. Well, we got to, you know, we got to battle one uh, stupid law at a time. And, you know, if we can get the suppressor one reversed, then maybe we can work on the, uh, the full auto one next. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's my thesis is that anything that Obama <laughs> did doesn't even hold a candle to how horrible of a law that was that he well, signed. It's, he it's kind of like you and I have talked uh, off air about, and it's like Obama has been the best thing to ever happen to the gun industry. And, you know, not maybe that he even, maybe maybe he didn't intend it that way, but uh, <laughs> I think I really do think like the combination. It was like a perfect because I mean there was like three A. There was like Colt and Armor Light and and Bushmaster. And I really some of us of our age have watched it happen where it went from like nobody really had ARs. Like yeah, I no, was the never only saw one it. that I knew of that had one in like yeah. in the late nineties. There were some people who were like the really cool dudes who like really in the guns had some, but that was it. Yeah, I mean, the only people I knew were like Vietnam vets, you know, that, yeah. that had, that had them. Yeah. yeah that, that would be the me, only I knew people. one Vietnam vet who had one. He had two right. actually and drop in auto sears that he got before yeah. I wasn't old enough to do it. So, but you, there wasn't really too much you could do with it. That was like, there were, there was no Picatinny rails, so you couldn't really like put an optic on. So you're stuck with iron. No, there was no, there was no customization to it. No at all. aftermarket support. So I really think that the combination of, manufacturing becoming a lot easier mm-hmm. just as a whole in the world. You know, like and I remember like 10 years ago or 20, 20 years ago to see a CNC machine was like magic. You were like, what is that? You mean like that you put it in that box over there with all the buttons and it spits parts out. It's crazy. And now yeah. they have like, everybody's got one for the most part. And then. Yeah. If you, you got have, like half a million dollars to drop on one of the good ones but i mean that's half a million dollars and a whole lot of money these days you know what i mean well if you're if that's your business yeah absolutely yeah and then especially if you can make you money yeah i mean that's the time. whole thing yeah. yeah but now they've got these these that are just the size of a freaking uh, multi-purpose printer that you know you can put your 80 percent in and it'll cnc them and they only cost what like a thousand bucks maybe yeah isn't that neat Maybe and then nobody was doing, nobody was making their own lowers back then. Nobody did eighty percent. Uh-huh. I remember I got I got what was called an eighty percent back in there. Like here's an eighty percent, and literally it was just like a forging. Mm-hmm. It was just like a forging of a something, and there was like, like it would you'd have to be like you'd pretty much have to have a machine CNC machine anyways to get it to be complete. And I'm like, well, I could just if I had a CNC machine, I could take a block of aluminum and make it into a receiver. I, why am I buying this yeah. forging? It's slightly well. Easier. And they came out with the uh, you know the jigs that you can put on them, and you can. You can hand press them now. I mean, you got a hand drill press. You can do your own. The eighty yeah, percent. This one right here. This is eighty percent right here. I did it with gone. a hand press. Whoa, ghost! Did it with, <laughs> did it with a hand press. Well, like yeah, you have this manufacturing getting easier. You have the Brady Bill going away, so you're allowed to have all this cool stuff now. You have like hundreds of thousands of veterans coming back that are using these ARs have Picatinny rails on them. So you're using like ACOGs and optics. And the, the, uh, now that the thing has a Picatinny rail on it, people are making all kinds of crap to attach to it. Yeah. And then, and then you have like, now you have ammo, not people, to mention the ammo. ammo. And now you have other people getting involved in it too. And so yeah. like before it was only like gun people getting involved with gun stuff. The fact that like so many other people now, all those things are get, combining with other people wanting to join. It's kind of like what came first, the chicken or egg there. So more people want it and more people are getting in that like that really, I don't want to say have no business, but like normally would not have gotten into it if those conditions weren't filled or right. whatever. They weren't, weren't getting popular. So they their popularity just made them more popular. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like why do so many people buy Glocks? Because so many people buy Glocks. You know what I mean? It's like what came first, the chicken or egg? Like, like I buy a Glock because it's super – so many people have them. I know I can find aftermarket support for it. And it's and the training is right. simple. If the hits the fan, you know. There's going to be a lot of a lot of parts you can or scavenge if, and find. Or if it doesn't hit the fan, and I just want to have find a holster for it. If I get yeah. like the HK VP whatever it, the whatever the HK thing new the thing VP comes now. out, whatever it is, yeah. If I get that, I mean, there is and then say there's a hundred holsters for it. Well, if there's a hundred holsters for a VP nine, there's a thousand for the clock. So I just get to choose for more. And so but even that, even that, Peter has become. Uh, so easy for people to do. The Kydex market has just gone through the Every, roof now. So. The whole market of everything has gotten better. 
Yeah. And so, so it's just, it's created jobs for people. Yeah. You know, and I think the panic set in by some of the shootings and like the, the, the threat of legislation right, gets people who, some people I know who normally would not want to AR are like, well, if I can't ever get one, I'm going to buy one before I, I mean, during the panics, you see all kinds of people buy guns who yeah. normally would not have bought one had it not been for that panic. Well, and, and what you get there, Peter, is you get a lot of opportunists, you know, people who think that they can make a quick buck. You know that that's you know when the ammo shortages happen. Yeah. You had a lot of these dirt. these the freaking worst. these jack wagons that don't even own a gun would go stand in line at Walmart and buy all the ammo just and then put it back on the inter, on the uh, interweb and sell it for triple what they just bought it for, having no intention of of using it. They're just trying to make a quick buck. Yeah, but sometimes that backfires too. Like when the panic subsides and you're really screwed. Like, right, yeah. and that's what happened to a lot of people this last time, and I loved it. <laughs> yeah, me too. And th- that's why I like hate cheaper than dirt because they're the ones who, they're the ones who like throw the start to spark to start to fire because they'll be like P Mag hundred dollars, and then everybody said, "Did you see this? It's hundred dollars!" And then, it, then they everybody freaks out. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what happened. So I'm like, I will never buy anything for if they're like you could get five five six for one penny a round off of cheaper than dirt. I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> you just boycotting them all together. Yeah, I don't think they're, I've ever bought anything from cheaper than dirt. Anyway, no. I've, I don't think their prices are that good. I've seen better prices other places. Yeah, well, I mean, th- there was a time when those catalogs and stuff were like the only way to get stuff. I mean, the internet. True, true. the interweb has uh, definitely opened up some doors, no yeah. doubt. Well, let me get to my jack rag- wagon real quick, and uh, they are very deserving. Uh, to be on the jack wagon train this week, and it's going to be Facebook. Facebook, as we all know, they aren't very 2A friendly, and they have been picking on a lot of uh, gun companies lately. Particularly this week, they have picked on our sponsor, Nordic Components. Nordic has been trying to make some posts, and we haven't mentioned that today is Veterans Day. And we're recording on Veterans Day, and we want to thank all of our veterans, and uh, we want to thank our active uh, military men and women that are serving to protect us and our rights and our freedoms. So thank you very much. That being said, Nordic was trying to make a post today just thanking the veterans. You know, it was a a simple post, and I'll read you the post. Uh, So they they posted this on their, their Facebook page. It says, the nation which forgets its defenders will be itself forgotten. We remember our veterans every day here at Nordic Components and are fortunate to have many servicemen and women as customers and sponsored shooters. Many thanks to all who have served past and present. And then they've got a uh, a little picture there of the flag and the different branches and whatnot. Uh, So they wanted to boost that post. So if anybody's familiar with how you boost a post, you got to pay money. You know, that's Facebook's thing is they limit your post on how many of people that follow you it goes out to. So, uh, for instance, uh, Talking Lead has in excess of 50,000 followers right now. And when I make a post, it might go out to 300 people uh, or it might go out to 12,000 people. But it will never go out to everybody who has an interest uh, in Talking Lead and is following is subscribing to Talking Lead. Uh, because they've got this little thing where they want to make money and you got to boost it and pay to reach all the people who follow you. So that being said, they they did this um, boost and they have to be approved by uh, Facebook before they'll allow them to get boosted. Uh, and usually it takes at least 24 hours for them to get back to you. When Nordic Components hit the boost post button, they immediately got this uh, sent back to them. It says, your ad wasn't approved because it promotes the sale of ammunition, firearms, paintball guns, BB guns, or other weapons, including knives, daggers, swords, bows, arrows, knuckle dusters, <laughs> okay, and nunchucks. Advertising nunchucks. the sale of weapons. Nunchuck skills. Yeah, nunchucks. Advertising the sale of weapons or leading to destinations where the business primarily focus on the sale of weapons is not allowed. Keep in mind that ads can promote advocacy or interest groups that help connect people who have interests related to these products, as long as it doesn't lead to the sale of any weapons. Before resubmitting your ad, please visit our policy site to learn more 
and see examples of ads that meet our guidelines. If you've read the guidelines and think your ad follows these rules, blah, blah, blah. So you guys, you heard the the post that I put on there. Was there anything in there pushing, promoting the sale of firearms or weapons? No, there wasn't. So they just immediately, because they are a manufacturer of components, they don't even sell firearms or weapons. They're not in the business of doing that, not yet anyway. And he, he told me that he tried to do this the other day to another post that they had, and it wasn't, oh, actually, it was the show that he was on. He tried to boost our show from last week, episode 126, on their website, and Facebook wouldn't allow them to do that because this same message came up. For some reason, they, they're on Facebook's uh, watch list. So I, don't, I don't understand it, but this is happening to a lot of people, especially a lot of firearms-related pages. You know, thank God it hasn't happened to, to Talking Lead yet. Who's to say that they won't just shut everything firearms related down on Facebook? Um, That's what's going to happen. And you know what's next? What's that? Instagram. They're already starting. Oh, without a doubt. You know, Instagram, Twitter, you know, all those. So what we need is we need Snapchat. a we need a, a 2A advocate, uh, some brainiac to put together a Social you know, media. Facebook for yeah, social media thing for for the two A community, uh, and then ban all these other people from from their stuff, and have some stupid ass little warning here that oh, uh, your ad wasn't approved because you're a bleeding heart liberal dumbass, uh, libtard. <laughs> it's kind of like gun broker, you know what I mean? Gun broker? Yeah, they even have eBay. Do on, I don't do much on gun broker. Oh. What do they do? Gun brokers like eBay, exact format of eBay, but you can sell guns on it or whatever. And no, oh, okay. not that there's like a liberal listing, but if you are, you still have to send it. They don't just send it to your house in the mail. That doesn't work. So you still have to send it to an FFL. I mean, so you right. buy it from John and either you meet John in your state and get it, or you, uh, you know, you have them ship to your FFL. And But you can sell gun parts or whatever. There's no restriction on what you could sell there. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like a gun owners club and arms list is that's just an open forum where people can come. It's kind of like a Craigslist, I guess. And this trade, like buy, eBay. sell. It's like you bid on guns and stuff. It's, it's it's eBay for guns. Gun Bay. Okay. Gun bay, yeah. Gun broker. Yeah. I mean, how do you not know that? Come on. Gun broker. Grab him again in the game. Oh, dude. I've been there. I've just never, I just never, I've, I've been there. I've just never bought anything from it. Yeah. It's kind of cool because like when you see, you know, when you see anything, like if I want to know if a, how much a Beanie Baby is worth, you'd go on eBay because that's really what it's worth. Yeah. For, and so with guns, like I went, I was, I wanted see what to see what the going rate is. Yeah, Tavor, and then like people. in the store, it was like two grand plus I had to pay tax. So it'd be like 2200 bucks, right? Yeah. Where I go on Gun Broker and I could find some for 1500 bucks. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, whatever. It's like 50 bucks shipping or something like that. You know what I mean? I know a buddy who would do his transfers for me. Yeah. And, why, and I don't have to pay tax. Why wouldn't I do that? Why would I not save myself like $700? Absolutely. Which is why I use the gun broker or the arms list because it's, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just individuals. And sometimes there's businesses on there too that do transactions with one another. And if you're in the same state, it's perfectly legal for me to buy a gun from you or vice versa. For you to buy a gun for me, you know, as long as you are legally capable of owning said, you know, firearm or weapon. Yeah, I, when I sell a gun, like a lot of people don't like it, but I like, I kind of like to go through, go to FFL and have them transfer it. It's twenty five bucks. I'll pay for it most of the yeah. time unless it's a really, really cheap gun. Yeah. But I, because I, I don't know if the guy's a felon or not. You know, how am I not? I'm, no. I'm, I don't have to. So like when somebody's like, oh, I don't want. It's like, why? Why do you not want to know? Like I get it. Not wanting somebody to know you. Well, that's all the more reason not. If they refuse to do that and they don't want to do it, then don't you don't have to sell a gun to them either. You know. But a lot of people are just like, and I kind of, I mean, I'm torn because I get it. Like, you know, I don't want them to be like. But you're protecting yourself. You yeah, know, pretty much. Point. Yeah. You know, and that's what it boils down to is you got to protect yourself. Yeah. When it, and, when and that's why I were to do something with it. Yeah, I'd, I'll do a bill of sale. I'll ask for a driver's license number. Uh, you know, I ask for a carry permit, and if they don't have those things and can't produce them, I won't sell it to them. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, and then I'll take down their name and their number on a bill of sale that's just between me and that person. I have that for my own records. They don't want to do that. I won't. I won't do the transaction. And if somebody doesn't ask me to do it, uh, I mean, I'd be a little suspect, but uh, usually you get a good deal. But. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
uh, doing it that way. But, you know, I've gone through FFLs on, on deals like that before. I've had people insist that they go through the FFL, and the gun was a good enough deal that, yeah, I'll do that. I don't care. You know, that's fine. I got, you know, I'm perfectly legal to own a firearm. But, yeah, so Facebook is uh, on the jack wagon train. I think you're probably going to start seeing them clamp down more and more. And like Peter said, more of this, these major social media sites are going to be clamping down on us. Facebook owns Instagram, so. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah, it's next. I watched that movie, The Social Network, the other night. Have you ever seen that? No. You know, it's about that guy that started Facebook, Zuckerberg or whatever. Yeah. Hey, man, he he stole the idea uh, for Facebook. He's basically a thief anyway. I think it's really hard to be like super rich like that without being a thief. I think it'd be rough. Oh, my God. He's like, he's worth, I don't remember what, like $65 billion or something. I don't know. Some, some ungodly amount. It's redonkulous. All right. So that does it for our jack wagon train this week. All right, so let's find out more about the direction that Miss Clean is headed. I'm still waiting to get my um, my Kickstarter thing. I can't even remember what I ordered now. I know I ordered uh, one of those kits. I think I ordered a red one, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those guys that ordered the color ones. But I just thought it was cool, man. So I was going to use that to carry my um, med stuff in, you know, with okay. it being red and, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, we did a first aid and a, and a trauma kit mm-hmm. both in red. I don't remember. It's been so long, <laughs> Captain. Well, it's because you haven't filled out your survey yet, so I don't know survey. what color you want or where to send it. And you oh, were one of the first bad. people to go, so that's why. My bad. I didn't. I don't we'll call you one that. a red one. Sure. Okay. I'll take whatever whatever you got. I don't care. I have all of them. Okay. What other colors do you have? You just have black have, and red, right? I have black, red, and flat dark earth. The doubles. Ah, uh, okay. I'll do red. All right, Peter, tell us tell us the direction that Miss Clean Kit is headed now. What's what's new and exciting coming up? We pretty much sent out a hundred percent of the Kickstarters that people respond to the survey, and so there's only like, <laughs> like me. Yeah, you know, so there's only like thirty people of the like eight hundred or something that didn't respond yet. But we mailed all those out, and now we're gonna redo, revamp our website, and rebuild our website, and that's when we're gonna offer the new. Uh, double for sale to people who missed out on the Kickstarter. But there are some people who bought them, uh, Weapon Outfitters, F3 Tactical, Cops Gun Shop, uh, Savoy Leather, and I mm-hmm. think uh, Fight Soapy actually bought some. So if you missed out on the Kickstarter, they actually went on the Kickstarter for the uh, dealer level. So they'll be offering them soon. Oh, uh, okay. Why don't we revamp our website? Very cool. I bet Savoy is going to do something uh, special with them. He didn't but, tell me, so I bet he I bet he will. I bet I bet Bond will too with fight soap. And yeah, I we actually had some hygiene kits with them and we sold those as and I have some surplus I sent to him, so he might be offering those for giveaways or whatever. So look awesome. out for them too. All right. So so look for the new website. Is it the same uh, same website URL? Same. Yep. And if you just Google us, you'll find it. MS Clean or Miss Clean. However, we're gonna we have both so. Miss Clean, MS Clean, you go on them all, right? Yep. Very you cool. Should, if you, you can't find us, then I'm scared that you have a gun. <laughs> you, need to, to <laughs> you need to turn your gun in right now. I didn't well, say that. You said that. I did. I certainly did. Oh, Jack Wagon out. Yeah, it's just mm. it's uh, www.mscleankits.com. That's where you go, leadheads. And that's going to be all revamped and. Can you can you tell us what the MSRP is going to be? Um, what they're going to sell for? I think it's going to be like seventy five to eighty bucks for the double. It has a bunch of stuff in it, and then we have trauma kits, and we'll be offering first aid kits, and the single as well, and the containers if you want them. So Very they'll cool. all be up there. But the, we still have the singles, and the single MSRPs are like forty five dollars, and I think that the doubles are going to be right around seventy five or eighty. Um, when you get that up, shoot me a message, let me know, and I'll make sure I post it on uh, social media. If they let you. Yeah, if they let me. Well, <laughs> as long as I don't boost it at this point. Oh. And it's only when you go to boost do they, you have to get their approval. Because they're already regulating where and who gets your post now anyway. That's crazy, the fact that they, they don't even want your money. You would think, I'm paying you, yeah, do whatever, have at it. It's nuts. 
it's nuts. But I guess when you're making sixty five billion dollars a year, you know, they don't yeah. want your measly thousand dollars. Yeah. It's just a drop in a bucket to them. Mm-hmm. So I, I would like I would like another platform to come out to where we can give them the big fat finger and tell them to fuck off. Yeah, me too. Kind of like um, Full Thirty has done for YouTube because YouTube was getting that way also uh, with the firearms community. So there's this group of guys that got together and they started this other channel. It's called Full Thirty. Um, that's just firearms related, kind of like YouTube videos. Yeah, but I'm not on it. No, <laughs> not on it. I have a, I have it. like a love hate relationship with YouTube gun people. Sometimes I love that it's there. It's a double edged sword. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. All right. So now it's time for our Sonoran Desert Institute fact to fight the myth. Zeke, introduce us. SDI is proud to present the talking lead fact to fight, fight the, the myth. 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 All right, so once again, Peter Palma has brought to us a new, I'm pretty sure we haven't had this one before, Fact to Fight the Myth, and it is going to relate to 556 versus 223. Explain yourself, Peter. All right, like, (laughs) the best way I could describe this is that I use an analogy of, of, well, pretty much just like this. Every This is what you'll hear a million times over. And somebody will say, I'll be like, here, I got this AAR or blah, blah, blah. And the question that's asked inevitably is, is that in 556 five, or is that in 223? Because I don't want to get the 223 one because if I use the 556, five, I'm going to win. It'll blow up and fuck, kill me. No, you're retarded. I want to be able to shoot both. I want to be able to shoot both, but I don't want to die. It's like, okay. So 223 Remington came out like in the 50s or like even before that. Mm-hmm. Right? But probably, I think it like right like in the mid 50s or like early, late 40s, early 50s. I don't know exactly. And it doesn't matter. Right. So yeah. that comes along and Remington makes it. So it's like a spec by Remington. And, you know, they, they adapt that round and make a 556. They change the powder out a little bit. And the military just like the, the, the dimensions in all are pretty much identical. They are identical. Right. Right, yeah. they're like, no, actually, this one's with the half of tenth off, or what? No, it's like, yeah, maybe, but is it? Is, it's the same. Basically, right? what it is is the five five six was designed to to do higher pressures. Yeah, and so it's a but it's a NATO spec, and they do everything in millimeters because it's NATO. So like one right. two two three is in standards, point two two three of an inch in, in in diameter. You know what I mean? The other one's millimeters in diameter. So anyway, so like if at that time you took some in like the fifties. If you took some like five five six ammo that was being used that was slightly more powerful than the two two three ammo made by Remington at the time, and you put it in some bold action rifle or whatever rifle made by Remington or not by Remington made to accept it that with the metal of that time, like in the fifties, you could potentially maybe have an issue with it. Mm-hmm. All right, but if you bought a gun in like the last thirty years, that is not an issue. You know what I mean? Like that's like if you buy an AR like now that's made like since they've been making ARs, if it's made by like Colt or like anybody, like you're not gonna have that issue. It is like is it? It's a non-issue. The metal energy and the stuff we have right now is not gonna. You're not gonna shoot. Oh no, the five five six is not gonna blow it up. Your barrel's not gonna blow up. No, right? it's you're completely and utterly like safe. And there's no difference in like stability or anything. It's like stop talking about it. And the best way it's it's kind of and this is exactly the analogy I use. So. On your coins, if you put out a bunch of U.S. coins, if you look at them, the dimes, yeah. the quarters, the half dollars and dollars will have ridges on the outside on the circumference, and then the nickels and the pennies don't. Why? Right. Some of you may know. Is it so you can get a better grip on them? No. Uh, it's because of this. Is it so you can put a line on people's face? <laughs> Historically, nickels and pennies, nickels were made of nickel, and pennies were made of copper, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And they were they were worth about whatever the the weight is and the size was of that. Well, dimes, it's it's a dime. It's ten cents. It's ten of a dollar, right? So a dollar was a, a troy ounce of silver. So it was a dollar of silver, and the half ounce or a half dollar is a half ounce of silver. A quarter is a quarter ounce, troy ounce of silver, and a dime is a tenth ounce of silver. And so it was it it wasn't fiat currency. It was actually silver, ninety percent silver, and you could take a knife and cut the edges of the coin off and then eventually you'd have a pile of silver, which then you could scrap and get money for. 
right? And so that's a, that those lines, those ridges are a preventative measure to keep you keep from, from stealing silver, off. right? So if, if you got a coin <clears throat> from before 1965, it was made of 90% silver, and you didn't have to accept that as legal tender if it didn't have the ridges, right? Because somebody had took and de- debased the currency by t- stealing some of it, right? Oh, so, so it's kind of so, like the crap they put in dollar bills for counterfeiters and stuff. So if it didn't have the ridges, then they know somebody's tampered with it and they wouldn't. Yes, have to. exactly. Okay. And okay. so they would take it out of circulation. And so, but now they still put the ridges in it because they just do, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Right. And- right. The same thing. So like, but they don't need to be there. Right. The same way you need to stop talking Every time I buy, I, I bring it up. Somebody's like, "Well, it's five thousand And then there's people out there who are actually like, who, who, who like c- continue on with this myth. It'd be like me telling everybody the reasons on there is because they're still made of silver and you don't want to cut it down. That's not true. It hasn't been that since like 1965. It's, it's a same. It's a moot point. Yeah. It's Unless irrelevant. You pick up like some rifle your grandfather had in the fifties, and even then you probably don't even have to worry about it. The metal energy sucked. They didn't have any ways of testing it or anything. <laughs> Right, and it's different different uh, composition of metals now. Technology has improved such that uh, the metal components have gotten a lot better, yeah. a lot stronger, a lot lighter in some cases. So for like some all pain. intents and purposes, they're the same thing. Could we please stop talking about it for the love of God? So don't wig out because your your barrel doesn't. It, if it says two two three on it, it doesn't have five five six on it. Don't wet your pants. Yeah. But if, you know, if, if it's that big of a freaking con- concern, just shoot 223 and you'll never have to worry about it. And 223 is typically cheaper anyway. So <laughs> problem solved. Oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> uh, well, good fact to fight the myth. Appreciate that. SDI's 32 semester credit hour certificate program in gunsmithing and 60 credit hour associate of science and firearms technology degree program can work hand in hand and are the most complete training programs of their kind. SDI strives to give you the best quantity and quality of professional gunsmithing information and tools. These programs are perfect for students interested in careers in the firearms industry or for those who are interested in owning their own gunsmithing business. Our programs are delivered by distance learning, which allows our students to maintain full-time jobs, families, military service, and more while working towards their degree or certificate. The Sonoran Desert Institute mission is adding value to our students' lives by providing innovative, relevant, and applicable workplace-driven education through distance-delivered instructions. Visit them at sdi.edu. All right, guys, so now it is time for the trivia, and last week's trivia was Nordic Components, and what you had to do is you had to go to their Facebook page, and they had a video on there with Jess Tishauer, and he was running something, so you had to watch that video, and... Underneath their comments, you had to put your answer as to what Jess was running, what Jesse was running, and then you also had to like the post. You had to like their Facebook page, and you had to leave with the comment, Leadhead was here. So I just got message from Casey, and Casey said to, to let that run another week because he wants to get more traffic there. You guys uh, kind of kind of falling behind a little bit, but I do understand that the show – um, by the time you hear this, uh, we'll have only been out a week. So he wanted to give you a fair opportunity. So we're going to extend that, and that's still just going to remain this week's trivia question. So Nordic Components, go to their Facebook page, watch that video with Jess Tishauer, with Jesse Tishauer. I've asked him to pin it to the top, so he's pinned it to the top, so it's going to be easy to find. And uh, we need you guys to flood their Facebook page. Give us the answer. Uh, like the Facebook page. Like the um, post and you are going to win one of their shotgun extensions for whatever shotgun you've got. If they've got it, then you're going to win that. So pretty big prize. If you can't wait, you don't want to wait on that. Go to their website, go to nordiccomp.com and use the discount code leadhead and you'll get 7% off any of your purchases there. Two ways you win, you get a discount code or you can win one of those, uh, shotgun components. Still haven't got a winner from the Primac video. It's only up to 850 views right now. you got to get it up to 900. We're only 50 away from that. And you guys are going to get those three videos of your choice 
from Primex. So go to Primex YouTube channel and it needs 50 more views, guys. Come on, 50 more views. You can do it. You're going to get those awesome videos of your choice from Primex. So that one's still up for grabs also. So until we get those two taken taken care of, I'm not going to put up any more trivia. So you guys get your asses in gear and uh, let's give some stuff away. So Peter Palma, yes. what what have you got just personally coming up? You, are you going to be going to any uh, gun events or uh, anything like that soon? No, I don't think so. Not planning on doing any shows or anything? Yeah, I have like a real job job and that's kind of like, I got a new offer to get paid this like vast sum of cash to go do it. And so I'm yeah, but you do- still like shooting. Do you ever go out and just go target shooting or? Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to be, uh, I have like a bunch of articles that I'm, well, by the time they hear this, it's going to be months later, but I have, uh, an article I'm writing for about a new vortex optic coming out. That is going to just like smash the dicks of a bunch of companies that are out there like is it they're in some trouble or is it I'm not a... saying but there's some companies oh, that are going to be in they're don't like tease me vortex is already like like starting to take a huge chunk of the market and they also have i got a strike eagle and it's not that i'll give you the hint of that thing is awesome uh-huh the one by six with the reticle makes it's like finally somebody made a reticle that makes sense like if you're buying like i mean i I, when I say I love the ACOG, I mean, people are like, oh, I love my, I love this. No, no, I literally like love it. I love it. Like, like it's like you've, if say you were like in a car and you were on fire and like mm-hmm. I came and I pulled you out of the car and I put the fire out and I bandaged your wounds right there and I saved you to get to the hospital. You would love me because like I saved your life. Like that's how I love ACOG. Yeah. But if you're buying like this, I like the three power and stuff, but if you're buying like any of the other Trigicon stuff, you're mm-hmm. pretty much retarded. You just wasted your money. Yeah, because they're they're like way more expensive, and they're nowhere near as well thought out as some of the Vortex stuff. And I will drink. Can you give us a hint? Can you give us a hint as to what it is? Is this now? Are you still writing articles for uh, Recoil? Yeah, so it's for Recoil, and I'm doing another one that I'm using my suited M for because just because. And then I'm doing one. I'm actually doing one on the. Of the one and a half power ACOG, which not many people know about. So I'm going to break it down in that article. Okay. And then there's another company called Gear Up by uh, Tim Ralston. He's a dude mm-hmm. who he shot his thumb off on uh, <laughs> Tuesday Preppers on TV. <laughs> Went, oh, it's a boom with a revolver. And now he's like this piece of bone right here is gone. But anyway, he's, he's definitely a crowd pleaser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Woo! He's like, it's just one of those malfunctions where, like, the gun went off with my hand in front of it. Oh, you mean you shot yourself in the thumb? No, yeah, but... Negligent uh, discharge? Yeah, negligent discharge. <laughs> you pulled the trigger on a double-action revolver with no hammer. It was a like hammerless two, uh, the Smith & Wesson 642, hammerless 38. And that was and that made the episode? Yeah, he, like, passed out. He, like, <laughs> shot in front of his kids or something. Like, not sure how long you'd be surviving the apocalypse, but um, he died. His ratings went through the roof of it. Yeah, everybody knows who he is now. I'm not sure that's good or bad, but. Well, you know what they say. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Tell that to Hitler. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, but anyway, uh, he has a cool thing where it's, like, a 12 gauge inserts. They have inserts now that for like for different shotguns, like to neck it down for like kids or whatever, but he's got yeah. like one, like a, they're eight inch long and they're, they're actually uh, rifled. And so you can put like 22 in a break open 12 gauge, or you could put 38 or you could put nine mil or 45 or 40 cal. So it's like the end of the world here. You only have a single shot break open 12 gauge everything or yeah. double anything that breaks open. It doesn't work on a pump because they're eight inches long, you know, uh-huh. and you can just, if you go in the house and you find a box of like three 40 cal rounds, you can still shoot it. You know what I mean? That's and cool. like, and pretty much all the common calibers you'd find in America, they're here. And who's uh, making that? It's called gear up. I'm going to write that down. Look yeah. That up. It's kind of cool. But, uh, they tried to get in, uh, with Chiapa to make a gun that was like 22 on the bottom and then 12 gauge on the top with a bunch of different inserts. Yeah. But I guess they were having some issues. So they're just going to make the inserts. And so I went and bought like a hundred dollar Kmart rusted shotgun from a pawn shop. It was yeah. like, I'm obviously the cheapest gun I've ever purchased in my life. And I'm like, it's just funny. They're like, look at this guy. Doesn't know anything about guns. He's buying the worst gun ever. And I'm like, just a breech load 12 gauge. Yeah. It's like a single shot 12 gauge. And it's, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, but um, 
I'm going to make it look like it's been in the apocalypse for a while. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to SBS it and everything yeah. and cut it down cool. and then like uh, do an article on that. So That'd I got a couple sweet. articles that are coming out. It's probably going to take a couple of months for them to be out, but yeah. recall done. magazine, my favorite magazine. That's the only magazine I read now. Yeah. That's most of the people, all the magazines in the world is just, it's recall. I mean, for nothing else would I buy a magazine for? Yeah. I mean, neither. Love it. And I have to buy it even. They don't even give me a free one. Can can, can you believe that? Are you serious? Yeah. Cheapos? I know. I'm telling you. So. Damn Ian. (laughs) How's he doing? Oh, he's awesome. He's uh, he's always breaking things. That's kind of what we do. Just break (laughs) stuff. Breaking stuff. Yeah. So I like he he was like, I'm going to test drive the new like uh, Nissan Titan or whatever. And it's like brand new. And he he, he always has old crappy vehicles because they're like, we're so hard on them. They're going to break. He's got like a old, old Volvo and like an old like Bronco. No, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a Bronco <laughs> from like a million years ago. And uh, this thing's brand new. I'm like, Ian. The old OJ Simpson Bronco? I don't know if it's a Bronco. I think it's, I don't know. I don't know those trucks. But, um, it's like a big SUV type thing like that. And uh, he got this thing. I'm like, Ian, you are going to break. Like, why would you ever get this vehicle? Like you're in, and in instantly like, like it, he put on Instagram and like three hours later, he made a post where it was like the body was all smashed up. Cause he like hit some rocks <laughs> or something. I'm like, he flipped it. <laughs> he didn't flip it, but he like, you know, yeah. tried to go over some stuff. It couldn't go over it in like the body panel. Like the doors got all like seriously, like you're not buffing that out. Like you well, that's the only it. way to know is to get somebody like him to go test one out and say, okay, it won't do this. <laughs> Don't do this. Like, I, I, we'll break everything. Like if we go out, everything will be broken. See, that's, that's why I tell people is like, if you want something truly T and E'd, give it to me because I have broke everything. I can't think of anything I've not broken that people have sent to me to T and E. I've broke it somehow, some way, which is good. That's what they want. They want to know if it'll break, you know? So I figure that's, you know, I'm doing them a favor. <laughs> I did. So I did on that. I did the spork too. I did a little torture test on it. I eventually broke it. You know, I put it in the microwave, but uh, that broke it. But like it was <laughs> that, insane. That'll break it. Yeah, insane what it went through. So I broke a 308 from two vets' arms. <laughs> um, what else did I break? I brought, uh, broke the Glock. Uh, was it the 40, 47 when it came out? We actually went down. Oh, they have the, the Glock. 47 already. Uh, this was like before they started put out those single stacks. They had had uh, a longer, um, uh, like competition style. I think that was block a block thirty four. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. It was like three years ago. Yeah, Glock's numbering system doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like they started like this one holds seventeen rounds. What should we call this next model? We came up. Well, let's just call it eighteen, and it went from there. I'm like, <laughs> you just like add a number every time a new gun comes. I just don't understand. There's no rhyme to their reason. Yeah, yeah no. it's confusing. But yeah, that's Glock. They can do what they want to. Yeah, well, must yeah. be nice. But yeah, so yeah, if you want something broke, send it to me. I'll be happy to break it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like I I I hate one of the things. Like a lot of people in the industry are just like gear free gear whores, and so yeah. I have a policy where if you send it, I will do one of two things: I either give it away or I will break it. I'll find some way to break I, it. I, like I make enough money where I just, if I want something, I buy it. Like I don't need to be it's like, Oh man, I did this and they give me free, whatever. I'm like free, whatever. The thing's like $300. Yeah. Buy one. Why right. is that? Like, like I got a free $300 thing that I didn't even want in the first place. they will never use. All right, guys. That brings us to the end of another episode of talking lead. I don't think I told them what episode this was. This was, uh, 127. Jeez. Yeah, man. I'd like to uh, thank Peter for being on. And uh, you guys, make sure you go check him out at MissCleanKit.com. That's M-S-C-L-E-A-N-K-I-T.com. And uh, be sure to check out that new website. It's who what? It's plural. There's an S. Just Google. Just go to Google and then type in MissClean. And it'll pop up. Oh, yeah. It's okay. It's M-S-C-L-E-A-N-K-I-T-S. MissCleanKits.com. My bad. So make sure we get that right and uh, check them out on Facebook and you just do MS clean and it'll pop up on there and check out the Facebook page. Do you guys have a YouTube channel? We do. Uh, there's a couple of videos up on there. Uh, once we get all the products, I've mostly been focusing on trying to get the Kickstarter completed and the new website up. And once that's done, I'll uh, 
see if we can get some videos. I made. remember for a while there, you were doing some cool kind of uh, tip videos. Yeah, the Q tips. Yeah, uh, you're cool. Dugan was here helping with me with those. Uh, we did them all at the same time. So, gotcha. I think you should do some more of those. They were, I enjoyed them. I thought yeah, they were I, have, I have a bunch. Pretty informative. Uh, check out our sponsors, uh, Nordic Components. Go to their website and use the Leadhead discount code at Nordic Components, Tactical Walls, Dipstick Coatings, and Promic. And you're going to get some nice Leadhead discounts there. Uh, today is Veterans Day. Uh, I mentioned it before. Thank you to all of our veterans. All our veterans. You're a veteran. All American veteran. Well, all allied veterans, we'll say. Right. If you're a Nazi, we don't care. You're a douchebag and die, Nazi scumbag, die. But Peter's, a, Peter's a veteran. So, Peter, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank is you. there anything? Have you ever, ever heard from Top Shot again? Is that show canceled? Is that still going on? What's... No, it's done. Oh, usually once they do an all-star season, that's over. I thought they did I... like two all-star seasons. No, they just did one. There's a, uh, there was like two or three shows that like they get. They've contacted me since then, but that's like – it's such a pain. It's almost like being in the military again, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah, but this is your second go around. You'll know better now. You know. Well, I mean, there was there were just like different shows, and I don't know. I just the reality TV is ridiculous. I don't know. It is. It can be, but yeah. you know, unless you get some cool people that are actually running it and doing it. Do you ever keep in touch with any of those guys? Oh yeah, a bunch of them. Chris so Serino, he, he does the all the nitriding for my uh, carbon scrapers that are in the new kits. And I saw him in Kentucky at the uh, Brownells. He was at the Brownells uh, three gun. I saw him up there at that. Oh cool, Chris Serino. Yeah, he's doing the three gun. We sponsor yep. a three gunner. I need to start Casey sponsoring Gears. people. I want to sponsor. Uh, Hunter, the no-handed nubs, the no-handed shooter. That dude is awesome. That's what you need to check on Instagram. He's, he was born with no yeah. hands or whatever, and he could just like, seen that. just destroy me. I'm like, I'm not even going to shoot three gun because I'll, I'll lose, and this guy doesn't even have hands. It's crazy. The dude's awesome. And he's young. I just like the, I like the, I like to, like, Royal Nonsuch and, and Hunter and some of the younger people. I really like to, like, embrace them. Not physically. Well, maybe I would. <laughs> I would embrace Royal on such. I have a good hug. I have a good hug. But um, just because when I was younger, I remember being like twenty and really liking the like liking guns, and I didn't know anything, and I was in the military or anything like that. And so I went to a. I remember I'll never forget this. I went to a gun store, and there's like what I call like the quintessential cliche grumpy old man shooter oh, yeah. who would tell who would still be telling people about the difference between five, five, six, and two, two, three. And I walked in, and I was like, hey, you know, I don't really know much, but I'd love to learn and. You know, uh, I work for really cheap or I would just do an internship or whatever it is. And the dude just like looked at me up and down and then literally laughed out loud. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. What a douchebag. What a douche. And it's like now, whatever, I have a bunch of experience and done a bunch of things. And it's like yeah. I would well, never. It's up, to, it's up to us to cultivate the younger culture and steer them in the right direction instead of them getting the bad experience like that douchebag from the, you know, the gun store. Yeah. yeah, I've had a vendetta against like the NRA and them ever since. Like, I can't stand them. The NRA was emailing me and calling me all of the time. We know what we need, and like now we need new social media. Like, we need we need like a more modern NRA thing. We need to like start like we are young people who don't like drop leaflets out of bombers or call you at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, and and so because I want to like I want I would give tons of I would give an, an enormous amount of money to somebody who was fighting for my gun rights that wasn't the NRA. Yeah. I would, I would like put, put, instead of putting money in for my, ch my checking account into my savings, I would just give it to this, like all of the time. Wasn't and the I, NRA owned by some company anyway? Aren't, aren't they like um, commercialized now? I don't know. I, I think so. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, there needs to be a, uh, a revamp, I guess, so to speak. Another option. Yeah. For people, but uh, I would like on the same theme of talking about the, I would look at uh, Hunter. He's a no-handed shooter on Instagram. Nubs, you can find him pretty easy. And then uh, Royal Nunsuch, that's his YouTube channel, and he just 
it's really interesting to see. Like you have to remember, the kid's really young; he's like 19, 20 years old. And but some of his videos are back from before when before he was even 18. He's making like shotguns out of tubes, and he made like a 50 cal, and it's like all welded up, and it's like it's super <laughs> shady, and it's like yeah. you know sometimes it works, and it's crazy. And sometimes it just blows up. Like there was one where he's like, he's like, "Can I make a grappling hook launcher?" And he just is launching like grappling hooks, like straight up into the sky. And I'm like, but see, that's where insane. innovation comes from. Is it's kids with imaginations like that that are actually going out there and trying to put their ideas, you know, to work. Uh, you know, eventually they're going to be at one of these freaking mega companies making the next, you know, greatest innovative firearm or firearm accessory. Yeah, like if I was like a billionaire, I would send him a CNC machine. I'd be like, here you go. When you when you make millions of dollars, which you will, you could pay me back for the CNC machine. Right. Like I know just this, like because he's got like something out. Yeah. He just uses an angle grinder and a welding machine, which I'm down with. But you know, it's I'm like that's awesome. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, go check that guy out, and uh, uh, definitely make sure you check out Recoil, uh, their website and their magazines on the book stands, the best firearms magazine out there, bar none my opinion. Thank you. It's the number one selling magazine on newsstands. So, or gun magazine on newsstands. Yeah. So that cool. helps. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sonoran Desert Institute for uh, all their sponsorship, everything they do for the show. Make sure you guys go to sdi.edu and learn how you can safely, maybe we need to get uh, the role guy hooked up with SDI so that he can get some proper gunsmithing training. No, no, we don't want them to have that. It's way more interesting to watch them try and figure out. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, but check them out, sdi.edu. And um, for the veterans, uh, you can go there and you can use your GI Bill to help pay for that. And you, uh, they've got all kinds of different armors, courses, certifications uh, to help you with that. Or if you just want to take it for the heck of it, I mean, uh, if you don't want to make a career out of it, like me, you know, I took it just for my own personal benefit because I got this addiction of gun building now, and I want to make sure I'm doing it halfway right. It has served me well so far. Uh, Mission 22, check out mission22.com. Mission 22 is the organization that you guys have heard me talk about time and time again, and I'm not going to stop talking about them. Uh, 22 veterans a day on average commit suicide, and that is unacceptable. Uh, we need to get that number down to zero. And this organization was developed to bring awareness to the public and try to bring change. Uh, whenever you get awareness, you get change. So go to Mission 22, buy their shirts, buy their uh, hats. They've got beanies out now. I'm supposed to be getting one of those uh, today, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, so they were down to at a Veterans Day. Casey Griggs invited them down to a Veterans Day parade in his neck of the woods here in Tennessee. And they came down and set up shop there. If you guys have any big events coming up, go to um, my email. Send me an email, talkinglad at gmail.com, and uh, we'll try to get them out there. Uh, all the exposure that they can get is greatly appreciated. The uh, guys at Sheepdog Impact Assistance, uh, check out Sheepdog Impact Assistance. That's the organization that is set up to uh, help those uh, former military, law enforcement, fire department, uh, EMS, uh, personnel that uh, maybe they retired, but they still have that cheap dog instinct and they want to uh, serve and protect. Uh, they set up da disaster recovery missions uh, for these people to go on. Uh, and even if you didn't serve in the military or weren't law enforcement or fire department uh, and you just want to help out, there's a place for you also. Uh, you can donate your money. You can go and buy. They've got really cool gear there also, shirts, hats, um, They've got all kinds of gear there, so go check out sheepdogia.org. I didn't know it was Veterans Day until I looked on my damn Instagram feed. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I Googled Veterans Day today under news, and not one of the freaking major news sites had anything about Veterans Day on their main page. Yeah, they don't care. It was, it was f***ing ridiculous. But anyway. They don't care. And as always, leadheads, keep your loved ones close. And keep your Miss Clean Kits closer. And make sure you don't go kiss a lion on the nose when he's sleeping. Unless he's tranquilized. Unless he's tranked. Do it. <laughs> Give him a big old Zerbert. <laughs> <laughs> and in honor of Veterans Day, here is veteran, country music artist, and fellow leadhead, 
Marcus Fox with I'm Still Coming Home. I hung up my boots and turned in my gun. I put on a suit like nothing's wrong. And if I'm up all night, it's just that I can't sleep. Not because I'm not where I want to be. Yeah, I'm still coming home, leaving the past over there. I'm fighting to let go, and I'd be so scared. In my mind, I'm still up on that ridge. Yeah, I'm back. in that bridge Yeah, I've seen the face of fear and pain And I've been crazy and back again So don't give up on me Cause I Still crossing there